Okay, let's talk about locks. Um, and, well, we have, you know, the standard physical locks with a physical key. Um, and then there are many, many other kinds of locks. And, of course, uh, even the standard lock with a physical key, you know, there's a lot of difference in uh, quality, quality, in um, protectiveness, in how uh, effective they are, how, well, like we talked about in uh, cryptology, what's the work factor involved in opening them up if you don't have the key? And uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, we've got, you know, physical uh, keys, then we've got uh, cipher locks that um, don't have a physical key. Or, you know, I've got one in my place that has a physical key in case the battery on the cipher lock goes dead. Um, but, by and large, um, you open it and lock it by knowing the code. And, uh, you know, so you don't have to have the physical key. So, you know, we're back to access control and something you have, something you know, something you are. We do have uh, physical biometric locks um, in, in some cases. So, you know, we've, we've got all of those uh, possibilities and options. Um, we have uh, smart locks. Um, uh, interestingly, uh, I mean, you know, generally speaking, a smart lock you would think of as, as uh, again, it's something you have, but what you have is not as much a physical key as um, a, a card, uh, generally speaking, a proximity card. It's uh, really interesting uh, with those things. Um, the, uh, of course, all of us have uh, probably smart uh, credit cards these days, the TAP credit cards, and they are proximity uh, cards. Um, the... Uh, yeah, I think I went through this in, in access control that uh, you've got a transponder, you've got an antenna in the card. Um, it picks up um, the signal that is radiated from the uh, reader device, which both um, uh, sends a message, send, you know, communicates to the card and powers the card. And the card performs an operation um, proving that it is the proper card and uh, uh, sends the information back to the uh, uh, transponder. Um, the, uh, but, you know, you, you can get, um, with, with these types of lock systems, uh, a lot more factors involved in it. You can have um, the, uh, you know, time controls. Um, certain people are allowed... Uh, access to the building, but only during working hours. Um, you know, and other people may have uh, broader access than that. So, um, you know, we've got uh, different options that we can add there as as we get into those kinds of controls. And, and generally speaking, with these uh, smart locks, um, we uh, will have access logs. You know, who was it that, that accessed uh, the building. Um, and, uh, again, with all of these, um, uh, with physical keys, with, uh, cipher, uh, locks, with, um, uh, the smart keys, um, we, we, you know, we need to manage the, uh, the keys, the, uh, you know, having, having controls on the keys, um, even with the cipher key, uh, we, um, uh, one situation I, I remember we found out that, uh, um, people were accessing the building, um, and, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it was more annoying than anything else, but, um, we found that they, um, actually knew the, uh, the access code, and, and we didn't, uh, weren't able to tell who had given away the access code because everybody had the same access code. 
And, and so you need to have key controls in, in that case as to, you know, who knows which code and which code is being abused. So uh, we've got uh, controls and management that we have to put in place there. Um, <clears throat> again, with regard to physical locks, physical keys, <clears throat> you have to pay attention to lock picking. As I say, I'm not uh, really good at it. It's not something that I have um, a terrific interest in. Um, but there's, you know, some people who uh, practice it and get very skilled at it. Um, there is also lock bumping, which is very unskilled. Uh, it is amazing how simple uh, lock bumping is. And in fact, you can get uh, devices where you just um, insert, uh, you know, some of the thinner parts into a key, press the button, hold it down for a while, and the thing vibrates and uh, bumps and, and what have you, um, and eventually the lock opens. Uh, you know, it's, that's, that takes no skill at all. Um, anyway, um, when you're dealing with uh, physical locks though, well, and, and other types of locks as well, uh, look at the bolts, look at the strike plates, uh, look at the dead bolts, you know, what um, level of security do you need here? Um, what, uh, you know, is it only security to prevent people from breaking in? Is it also security to keep people from uh, getting out? Uh, and, and again, as I talked about in construction, look at the hinges and latches. Um, there's a few other uh, factors that we should be considering in um, uh, uh, keys. Um, one of them being master keying. Now this is very often done in uh, companies and, and even uh, uh, residential uh, keys that a, a locksmith will master key um, either an office or a, um, an a, entire apartment building or something like that so that they uh, are able to easily uh, get into the apartment if uh, somebody has lost their keys, but um, that does introduce a, a weakness and any form of Mac master keying, of course, uh, reduces the uh, difficulty of somebody um, getting into the, uh, you know, breaking the lock, uh, uh, picking the lock, whatever. Uh, there's a uh, key override. Um, you know, do we need access in an emergency uh, somehow? And again, like, you know, password control um, and uh, uh, cryptographic key control. There are various uh, ways of, of uh, doing key override. Um, there's, you know, some additional interesting factors like uh, door uh, delay. Uh, you know, maybe we want to uh, delay someone, particularly in a man trap situation, um, uh, prevent both doors being open uh, at the same time. Sometimes that's a, a physical uh, indication. Um, the uh, remote indication of a do an open door and, and, you know, various ties to alarm systems. Um, so, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, factors again, just on the simple aspect of locks.